welcome and thank you for joining us to this mini session on technology in your homeschool. My name is Judy and I am the marketing sales coordinator for Sunlight. I'm also a retired homeschool mom and I have second generation Sunlighters in my household. So we're pretty excited about that. And joining me today is Tender. Hey, Tender. Hi, Judy. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about you. All right, I have four children here at home that we homeschool and I have two boys and two girls and my oldest is actually a senior this year and we're doing level 400, but we've done, he will have done sunlight the whole way through from pre-K um, all the way to 400. So we're excited about um, his opportunities that he has this next year and we are um, just plugging away over here. Awesome. Well, we're gonna jump right in and talk a little bit about utilizing technology in your homeschool. And I mean, both of us, I'm sure, have read articles and had people talk with us about how they have serious misgivings about um, having technology in their home. And so what would you say to somebody who is struggling with that decision? Well, um, we wanna learn how to use it the correct way and, you know, and learn how to keep people safe. Um, but one thing that did occur to me is I was actually homeschooled as well. And um, in high school, my dad brought home a computer and this is back in the nineties. And mm -hmm. I had to learn, he wanted me to type my papers and cause he was convinced he was telling us, he was like, girls, if you even go get a job at the grocery store, it's all going to be computers. You have to learn how to use a computer. And so he was very forward thinking because in those days it was cash register and, and counting things back his, um, and money back. But the, that kind of led my path into technology and work wise. But it's what I've wanted to do with my own kids is they need to learn how to use it, but learning how to do it the correct way and safe way. Sure. And learning how to do it at home before they go out on their own. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. One of the things we've done is we have allowed our children as they get 16 or, you know, at different, whatever you feel like maturity wise, but we wanted to be able to have some conversations with how to use like social media before they were out of the house, before they go off to college. We really want to have some conversations on how to manage that. And, and so we have allowed them to use, start using some of that but we just wanted to do it where we could still have those conversations. Sure, very wise, very wise. Well, let's chat about some specific positive ways that you can integrate technology into your homeschool to help with your academics. So are there specific apps or platforms that you have found to be um, very profitable for your homeschool? Yes, I've really enjoyed using a lot of Google resources because first they're free so it's very affordable and that that like the google doc suite i have been able to let my kids start using that so they know what a how to write a paper using like word doc and um i'm sorry google docs versus word microsoft word um so i around junior high i would let some of my uh, well, all my kids transition to writing some of their papers. They might do a rough draft still with pen and paper, but they would type up their final draft. And they and I had some that really enjoyed that that ceased a lot of the frustration when we didn't have to handwrite a paper, but we were able to type a paper into uh, Google Docs. And mm -hmm. since I have uh, been using Google Docs. It even has voice transcription. So I've even had some of my younger kids use that voice transcription to be able, if they're not, their typing skills aren't up to par, they can speak what they want for their paragraph. And then we can go back in and edit it together. And so that kind of saves me from having, I can get it set up for them, but I don't have to help them transcribe as I have someone learning. Mm. I know that was a huge benefit for us in our homeschool. I had um, one student who had fine motor skill issues. And so holding a pencil and trying to 
put thoughts down on paper was a real struggle. Yes. Because we focus so much on the correct way to hold the pencil and the paper that any creativity went totally out of his head. So getting him onto a keyboard was um, early. I think third grade was when we made that transition. It was a huge saver for mm -hmm. us. Yes, I have noticed that a few of my students that has really helped with being able to be more creative when doing a paper is if they were able to do it on the computer versus writing it out. Sure, sure. Well, I've got to believe um, some of the other Google suite tools are fun. Yes. Um, which ones do you like the best? Well, Google Earth is another one that I really, really enjoy. I know that when we did uh, level F with that visits so many different countries that we were reading like Daughter of the Mountain and we were able to go look at Lhasa, Tibet and we were able to do like a 3D look at a monastery and you could hear the bells and tinkling and so it was just a very interactive um, it just gives you more of a feel than even just a more of a 3D type of being there versus just looking at the map. So a lot of times we will look at the map when we're doing our mapping exercise, but mm -hmm. I will, at, you know, I'll say, let's go look at it on the computer and pull it up on Google Earth. And that just brings a really fun aspect to it, you know, to pull up the Great Wall of China that sure. we're doing. Awesome. Another way I like to use is Google search, but change it to images and mm -hmm. I like if we're doing reading books about a artist or something specific, if you change it to images, you can bring up like the works of art. Um, mm -hmm. And so like when we're reading about Leonardo da Vinci, we can pull up and look at all of his works and kind of talk about that. And that just kind of adds as we're learning about a specific sure. person or um, something in history. Awesome. Well, yes, like you mentioned, one of the biggest benefits of the Google Suite is that it's free. Um, yes. The Microsoft Office Suite is amazing, but there's a pretty hefty price tag with it. So um, it's nice to have those tools through Google. So how about some other subjects like um, maybe some language art subjects or typing or spelling or do you know any good uh, apps or programs that would work for those? Yes, I really like to use typing.com. It allows you to set up as a teacher, then you can enter your students in and there is, you can do it free with ads or you can choose not to have um, ads display and there's a little cost to that, but that is games where you can teach mm -hmm. typing. And so I would just have that be just one of the daily things that, and usually I started it in later elementary or junior high. I would let them, that would just be one of their activities that they would do is to spend a few minutes every day doing a typing lesson and playing. And it's a game, it's game based and they can kind of play mm -hmm. games. And then it does get progress reports and kind of just helps get them ready as they're to transition and start typing more. Um, nice. Another resource I really like is spellingcity.com. And that allows you as a teacher to set up your students and I can give the spelling list. So I have my spelling word list that I'm teaching them. And this just gives another fun thing. They can play a game with their spelling words. And it, once you have it set up, you could actually, instead of playing it on the computer, it, there are uh, apps that you can download and on Android or on iPhone and have them play games with their spelling words. And so we've used, utilized that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so another resource I really like is extramath.org. And so it's extra with an X, X-T-R-A, math.org. That is a flashcard and it app and it's free. And I was able to, again, you set up as a teacher, you set up your students and you can have it be on a device or they could do it on the computer. I have found that I really like my kids to use it on an app because they can touch the number, but um, it drills them in their multiplication or addition and subtraction. You can set up what you want them to be drilled on. 
And that was just another fun resource for us instead of me and also freed me up instead of actually, you know, doing the flashcards with them, I could hand this to them and say, okay, you can do, um, let's work on your math. And again, it's only like a three or four minute lesson and they'll go through and they do progress reports as well and just helps them learn those math facts in three seconds or less. The nice thing is, I think that, as you mentioned, it frees you up. So if you need to go do something with another student, this is something academic, you can hand off your child and have them go be um, busily employed doing more academics. Um, but I think it also helps to give a little different approach to learning. Um, not everything has to be textbook, workbook, or mom drilling back and forth. Sometimes it's nice to take the um, academics out of the textbook and to have a different avenue of interacting with numbers or words or, or typing or whatever. So yeah, I think there's some real, real plus, real benefit to that. Yes, I really like adding variety. Another app I really enjoy, but I use it for myself, is I will have a pronunciation app available as I'm reading because sometimes I need help with names if we're reading about Greek myths. Um, and so and so I keep that handy because I'd like to make sure I'm actually saying it correctly for my kids <laughs> and kind of review what I need to pronounce. And um, so I actually use a pronunciation app when we're doing some of our read alouds. That's pretty cool because we know there's a lot of that in, in sunlight <laughs> literature. Well, another um, technology that's especially nice for a literature based curriculum is um, audible books, um, being able to listen to books on what we used to call books on tape, um, but digital versions of books. And there are a couple of pretty nice apps that will interact with your local library. Um, I think you mentioned that you've used them before. Can you tell me a little bit about those? Yes, I really like using Hoopla and I in Overdrive. Those apps um, are, they're basically free resources that if you have a library card, you can download that and enter your information in. And then you have access to audio books um, or eBooks that are available to your library. And we have really utilized that as just, again, to add variety to what we do at home. Um, sometimes I'll let one of their readers, if I can find a reader as an auto, audible book, I will let them listen to their book versus um, read it themselves. And so I don't, it's not every book, but sure. that just, again, adds variety that they can listen to an audio book and then they're also reading their books. But I have, um, sometimes I like to load the books before a trip and we'll all listen together in the car. Um, sure. You know, and as we're cultivating that love to learn, I mean, I just, we have kids here that just love to have books in there and listen all the time. And mm -hmm. they would have me read to them all the time, but we would never <laughs> eat or have laundry. So I can't <laughs> read all day, even though I would love to do that. So yeah. I have some of my kids that really enjoy listening to books and play Legos or play in their room and, and be listening to the book. So we use Hoopla and um, Overdrive all the time. You can also use Audible, but usually that's a paid resource, but yes. I have just yeah. been so pleased with all the free resources that are available. Mm -hmm. So what about musical apps? A lot of kids are very much into music. So any good apps for helping with music study? Yes, I've been very impressed with Joy Tunes by Maestro and that is only an iPad app, but it's actually, you can download it and there's a part of it that's free and there's a part that you have to pay. Um, but even the free part, you can place the iPad on the piano and it'll show, teach you one note at a time. And then it has you play. Um, it sort of has like um, the staff going and the music note and it has you play like it teaches you middle C at first and you're interjecting and playing that note. Um, and it's listening to the listening to the piano. So if you're not playing it correctly, it'll pause and say, and wait for you to play the correct note. 
Um, so this is, my kids have enjoyed playing with that one and it'll teach you, you can, you know, do Christmas music or patriotic music and it'll teach you little parts to it as you're learning to read music. So I really, my girls have really enjoyed using that along with their pra piano practice is just a fun game time and mm -hmm. something to do um, that's different. Sure. And I also use an app called Flashnote Derby, which again, like math, it's just drilling the note names so that they're learning the treble clef or bass clef. And you can, again, specify what clef specifically that you want them to work on. And then they can be um, learning their notes that way. So again, it's just a real fun thing that allows them variety. And instead of me doing a flashcards with them on working on their musical notes, they're able to do it with an app. Awesome. Well, we, we need to talk about gaming because mm -hmm. that's something that often comes up. So do you have your kids use any gaming apps and how do you kind of work that into your day? Well, I do have some, I, most of my kids are very motivated and really enjoy being able to play games on, um, to play computer games. And so I've used that as a motivation on once we get our schoolwork done and they get their chores done, they know that they're gonna be able to have some time that they can play. And so Minecraft was big um, here at my house. They enjoyed playing that. And so those types being able to do that or, um, it, or play on some electronic, that is all an after school is done uh, privilege. And so we just kind of monitor and use it that way. And that has been a good motivation tool for my kids that they know that they're gonna get some time to do that if they get all of their work done. Yeah. Yeah, technology was a huge uh, motivator in our mm -hmm. home school. So yeah. very nice to have that little tool in your back pocket. <laughs> yeah, and there's even things out there that really encourage creativity. We've had um, the kids have really enjoyed, you know, if you have eye devices um, using like iMovie um, and creating their own little movies, like you can create stop and go animation with Legos, but there's also apps on Android and iOS that allows you to do stop animation, whether that's with clay or Play-Doh or with Legos. And so those kind of things um, are really fun. I feel like they're very creative and, yeah. and ways that they can use that technology. Sure. Well, those are some awesome um, suggestions and ideas. Let's talk just for a minute about parental controls because we do want our kids to be safe when they're on the internet. So have you found any that have worked especially well for your family? Yes, we like to use opendns.com and that is actually filtering at the modem level. So we wanted to make sure that um, it wasn't just a program installed on one device. Since you have, at these days, we have so many devices that connect oh, and true. have internet access you know, whether that's an Xbox or PlayStation or whether that's somebody's phone that, you know, a friend that comes in and has their phone, we wanted to make sure we were filtering everybody's content. And sure. so we use something called OpenDNS so that we're doing that filtering. There mm -hmm. are paid um, apps that are very good as well. There is like Net Nanny and Covenant Eyes. So mm -hmm. looking and I would definitely, you know, look at do a little research, but there are sure. some very good resources out there to make sure yes. that we're um, being a good steward of the technology that we have in our home. Absolutely. Well, this has been awesome. I think for me, the key takeaway from this is that like anything else we use in our homeschool, any resource, uh, technology is a tool. Um, right. So just like your sunlight instructor's guide is a tool and you are the master and it doesn't control you you are the one that is utilizing it in a way that best fits for your family. And I think we could say the same about technology. Um, it is a tool. And so if we utilize it as such, then it doesn't need to be um, a big hairy beast or a, a scary uh, thing to use in your homeschool. It can actually be very beneficial. So yeah. 
Well, great. Thanks so much for joining me today, Tender, and hopefully some of what we have shared today will give folks some ideas and thoughts on how to use technology in their homeschool. So I thanks so much. Thank you for having me.